What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm working on the Yamaha YZ250F that I completely rebuilt, but as you can see, I have been working on it since. So I gave it a few kicks when everything was put together and it didn't start. So the first thing that I want to look at right now on that video is the valves because I have no excuse, but when I rebuilt the engine, for some reason, I didn't take care of the head. I was like, it's gonna be good. I don't need to take care of that, took care of everything else, but that's the problem today. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm gonna do. So you want to check the valve clearance on your head and before doing that you want to make sure you're on the top dead center and there is two top dead centers on a four stroke you want to be on the top dead center between the compression and power the combustion so to do that you want to make sure that you have the mark on your flywheel right here lined up with that little notch and we're gonna come back here. We wanna make sure that the lobs on the two camshafts right here are in this position that you see here. So now I'm gonna turn the screen so I can really focus on what I wanna show. But this is this one here for the intake and this one here for the exhaust. You see how they're pointing out and out here. So right now we know that the valves are not pushing uh, I'm sorry, the camshafts are not pushing on the valves. So all the valves on that head right here are closed and that's exactly what we want. So now we're gonna go back on the other side. I'm just gonna take my little lamp, my little flashlight here. So let's go here. And I'm already on, on top dead center, but with a little bit of light, I'm gonna be able to show you. So you wanna pay attention to that notch right here and the notch that's on the, the rotor of the ignition inside. So with the light, I'll try to get you a good view. Maybe around here. I really want to show that it's lined up though. Uh, yeah, perfect, right here. So now you see, and really what nobody's talking about, there is not only one mark on that rotor that you see inside, but there is an H right before, trying to show it too. Well, playing with that thing is not the easiest with a flashlight. But on the rotor inside, there is HI, like high. So that means on top. And that's the I of the HI that needs to be uh, right here, lined up with that notch. And to know that, to make sure of it, you can just put a screwdriver or, I don't know, a welding rod in the spark plug hole right here to make sure that it's at the highest it's gonna go. But again, when the root rough key on the crankshaft is good with the rotor, that's exactly where it's gonna be. Again, I'm gonna show again with that flashlight, we have the high right here lining up. And just to show that my timing is right, I'm gonna show that that little one here, I'm gonna show differently, this one here is flush with my mating surface on the head right there. So you see how perfectly lined up it is. And we have this same thing going on right here. So we have one on top here, we have one on top here and one here. Those don't really matter except for the fact that you want them roughly where they are right now. So this is on top, this is on top. We on top dead center, we um, made sure of that right here. And here, that little one right here, that little hole, on the, on the camshaft is lining up with the mating surface and this one too. So we know that the chain timing right here is good. Now we know that we're gonna go on the other side and we're gonna measure the gap we have between the lobes right here and the bucket that is right there. I'm gonna get a better angle, put that on a tripod and show you exactly how I do it. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is to have your shop manual. For me, my valve clearance for the intake is between 0.10 and 0.15 millimeters, and for the exhaust, between 0.17 and 0.22 millimeters. For the sake of the example right here, I'm just gonna show that because it's very hard for me to show anything else on the camera. I measured everything, but we're gonna do this one because that's the most visible that we can do. So again, on the exhaust, between 0.17 and 0.22. And that's gonna be the exhaust cam right here. Okay, so we need, we know exactly what we need to have, and I'm gonna use a set of feeder gauges. I'll be, I don't have a 017 as the minimum, and I know it's too tight right now. I'm gonna try the 015, which is too small, and the 018, that would be okay. 
So let's start with the 0, 15 millimeters right here. So I go between the bucket and between the lob of the cam and I check it goes. And it goes the right way. So I know I have 0, 15 right now. The other one on the intake, everything is too tight. So I'm going to show you exactly the results I have. We're going to do the calculation to know exactly what we need to change to set everything right. Okay, so I measured everything and what you see here is basically a top view of the head. So we have the exhaust port, the intake port, and those are the valves. I have five valves on that head. It's a Yamaha thing. So I got three for the intake, two for the exhaust. And basically, I'm really off on all the measurements I had. There's only one that is roughly good. I'm at 0 018 on that exhaust left valve, and I should be between 0 017 and 0 22. So we will call this one good, but everything else here is not good. This is too tight, and the intake valves are particularly really tight. I'm at 0 0.05 on the left one, the center one is 0 0.04, and the right one, I wasn't even able to fit this feeder gauge right here, the 0.03, that is the thinnest one I have on that set right here. And you can see how thin this is. That didn't fit, there is basically zero on this one. This is always tricky when it's like that, you don't know exactly how it is in the valve train. So what we need to do now is remove the camshafts from the head. Okay, so now it's time to take the camshafts off of the head and I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. Okay, so my goal during that entire procedure is to not have to redo my chain timing at the end. I know the chain timing is good, so I wanna keep it this way. That's the reason why you see me putting a zip tie right now between the chain and the camshaft, just to make sure the chain stays where it is on the camshaft. I'm loosening up the chain tensioner right now because we need to have that chain loose when we're gonna move the camshaft in a second. So right now I'm taking the chain tensioner off, don't forget to do that, and then I will take care of all the bolts on the camshaft cap, I remove them, then will be the time to remove the camshaft cap. I will make sure I have that half circle clip you see inside, don't lose it, don't misplace it, you wanna make sure you have it on it because it keeps the bearing on the camshaft in place, super important. I'm putting the camshaft out of the way and then with a magnet tool, I'm taking the valve buckets off. That's the first one right here and you will see that inside there is a shim and that shim right here will be a 185. And by the way, that's the only one that I can see the number of. All the other ones are torn out. 185 for this one right here on the intake. And then I take the second valve bucket and then I will take the third valve bucket and we will be done for the intake, which means we can put the camshaft back in place and then take care of the exhaust with the exact same thing, taking the camshaft cap off and then putting that zip tie to make sure we don't change the timing. And then I will take that last one. That's the one we measured together. That's the valve bucket and the shim. Let's see exactly what I have. All right, so here it is. I got my four valve buckets and the shims. And I didn't touch this one because this one is at 0 0.18. And for the exhaust, we need to be between 0 0.17, 0 0.22. So that clearance is good. We don't need to touch this one. This is the one we measured together at 0 0.15 millimeter clearance. And I have a drawing right here that illustrates, I think, pretty well what's going on. So that's the head. I didn't represent everything. I don't want it to be confusing. There's also a spring that I didn't show. I just tried to get this thing very, very simple. So that's the head with the seat of the valve right here. And then that's the valve going up and down. That's the shim or the pad here, this little rectangle right here, and that would be the bucket, the valve bucket, or the lifter, if you want to call it this way. That's the gap right here between the camshaft here and the bucket. That's the, the gap, the clearance we measured together with the feeler gauge right here. So we know that for this one, this example right here, we have 0 0.15 millimeter gap right here. And by the way, why does it get tighter over time? So you have that camshaft that is spinning, spinning, rotating like that with that lobe going and pushing on that bucket right here. And this turns because of the chain coming from the crankshaft, by the way. So that turn, that pushes on the bucket, which pushes on the shim, which pushes on the valve. So that valve is going down and up, up and down, up and down, up and down. And over time, there is wear happening right here on that valve seat right there. So the valve gets worn out, the head gets worn out, and then that, because of the spring pushing it closed every time, gets up, 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 because there is less and less material here. And that's the reason why everything goes up 
and the gap right here gets smaller right here. That's the problem we have right now. So to remediate that, what we can do is we can lower that bucket by having a shim that is thinner because that valve is not going to change, that bucket is not going to change, but to change that gap right here, we need to have the shim here that is smaller. All right, I'm going to keep that drawing right here in frame so we can have an idea of what I'm talking about right there. So we keep that example right here. We have that shim there that has a number on it, but it's really worn out. It's not really a problem. We're trying to play with the reflection here. It's not really a problem because we just need to have a caliper right here. That's the most common caliper on Amazon. That's one of the best sellers. You don't need anything expensive. I'm just showing that it's always going to zero, zero, zero. So it's very repeatable. All right. And I'm going to do this 1.79. 1.79. Just turning the shim a little bit every time to show that I got the same measurement. All right. 1.79 millimeter thick for that shim right here. That's a great information that we need to have because now we know that with a shim that is at 1.79, we got that gap right here. And we need to have a clearance, a gap of 0.17 to 0.22. So we need to add at least 0.02 to the clearance to get to that minimum here to 0.07 to get to the maximum clearance of 0.22. We need to add that to this. And remember what we said, if we want to add gap, that means we need to reduce the thickness of the shim right here. All right. So we need to reduce the thickness of the shim by 0.02 to 0.07. It's 179 minus 0.02. That's 177 or 179 minus 0.07, that's 1.72. So we need to have a shim that is between 1.72 to 1.77. In the shim kit that I have, I have increments of 0.05. So if we find a 1.75, that's the best. If you don't follow on the math right now, it's not really a problem. I'm just trying to explain really what's going on here. But in your manual, you should find something like that. So for example, you got the intake, but we're talking about the exhaust right now. So we know that the installed pad number we have is 179 right now. Let's call it 180. We're going to round it up to 180 right here. And the measured clearance we have is 0 0.15. Remember right here? So we stay here and at 180, that's what we have right now. That gives us a pad, a shim of 1.75, a 175. All right, so that's exactly what we said right here with the math. If you, if you find it confusing, no problem. You just use that graph right here. It tells you exactly what shim you need to put. All right, so in the shim kit that I have from Hot Cams right here, I'm going to link it in the description. I'm going to try to find a 175. And that would be right here. I'm going to try to show. Here you see it maybe in the reflection of the plastic right here. That's the 175, but we're going to make sure that it's really a 175. That's always very complicated to get. So here we go. All right, I've got it and I'm going to measure it because I want to make sure that yes, it says 175, but I want to see if, if that's true. All right. Yes, that is a 175 millimeter thick shim. All right. So we are good to put back that shim on the exhaust valve on the right side, to put that lifter, that valve bucket on it, put the camshaft back on it, and then we can measure to make sure that now we have a clearance between 0.17 and 0.22. Let's go. So now we put the new shim on the exhaust valve and I'm trying to make sure everything is well lubricated. I put oil everywhere on the shim, on the valve bucket, then on the camshaft. I really don't want anything to run dry. So I put that clip that I was talking about before. Then you got that camshaft cap. I tighten everything very loosely at first and then I'll be using my torque wrench at 10 Newton meters and you'll see I'm tightening in a crisscross pattern because that camshaft cap is a very fragile part. I want to respect it. So that's the reason why I do 
it this way. I want to make sure I'm in top dead center. Remember that dot right here? So it's flush when top dead center, which means we can measure the gap right now, the clearance. So I try with the feeder gauge, 0.18 millimeter, didn't fit before, now it fits perfect. I'm trying with the 0.20 millimeters just to see where I'm standing right now, and the 20 goes, but it fits very, very snug. It's kind of rough. So I'm assuming I got 19 millimeters, 0.19 millimeters. I'm trying with the 23, the 0.23, it doesn't fit, which is great news. It's not supposed to fit. I'm just trying to see if the other one is still good, and it is, great news. And that's it for the exhaust valves. Now we can do the exact same thing on the intake. So we have three shims that we need to find thinner to get the correct clearance on the five valves. The complete head is going to be good and hopefully the engine is going to run. But if you want to see that, that's going to be on the big, huge video where I completely rebuild the bike. I do powder coating, painting, I change the seat cover, I rebuild the forks, the carburetor, everything you can imagine on a dirt bike I rebuild. So if you want to see that, you should definitely consider subscribing to the channel activate your post notification this way you know when i post the next video if you like this video well like the video it really helps me i see you in the next one and meantime keep building Perfect.